Hi, I'm Pastor Daniel Fluke from St. Peter Lutheran Church in Green, Iowa, and this week we're reading through Paul's letter to the Philippians, and today we're reading chapter 3. Paul writes, Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us, then, who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have told you often of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Here ends the reading. So the beginning of this third chapter is my favorite section of Philippians. What seems to be going on is that there are some people going around teaching that in order to be Christian, you need to be circumcised. I don't want to go very far into circumcision, but... Circumcision is a marker of Jewish identity, and Christianity started out, remember, as a Jewish movement. Jesus was Jewish, so you can see their logic. Jesus was circumcised. But Paul is teaching that in Jesus, God's salvation is extended beyond the chosen people, beyond the Jewish people. God is choosing not just one group, but the whole world. God so loved the whole world. God is doing a new thing, choosing all of us. So, Paul says, be wary of those who insist you have to do some physical thing in order to be saved. Our confidence for salvation needs to be in Jesus, not in the flesh or in any work that we can do. Now, Paul wants to make it clear that he understands his opponent's position he understands those who think they are the insiders and others need to become like them in order to receive God's salvation. So, here's the part I like. Paul lists all of his own credentials. He has all the right bloodlines. He's a Hebrew born of Hebrews from the tribe of Benjamin. 
He's done the right rituals, circumcised on the eighth day, following all the rules of the law. He's even gone the extra mile. He's zealous. He's persecuting those who believe differently. But now, because of Jesus, none of that, none of his credentials are, are worth anything. He knows now that they're all rubbish. I love that word rubbish because it's a really mild way of translating the Greek word there. The Greek word is more about stuff that goes into the sewer. Paul's single goal in life now is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He understands that it's all about Jesus, not himself. Everything he does, and he is still trying to do the right things, he invites everyone else to join in imitating him, everything he does is because Christ Jesus has made him his own. And that's true for you and for me as well. Jesus has claimed you. Not because of what you've done, not because of the bloodline you're from or the credentials you have, but out of love. Your citizenship is in heaven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for claiming us as your children, choosing us to be your people. Bless us this day and always, that we may have the strength and the will to press on to the prize given to us by your grace. Amen. Have a great day, and we'll continue with chapter 4 tomorrow. God bless you.